Mike Bond joined today by UFC women's bantamweight contender, Pani Kianza. Pani, how are we doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Awesome. Well, obviously on a very nice roll right now in your career, three straight wins. 2020 was very good to you with uh, a couple fights, which is more than you know some others were getting. So how are you just feeling yeah. about the momentum you have right now? Um, I feel, um, I feel, I feel pretty good. Um, I, I decided when I, when I got my UC contract that I would like make the best of it. And I think I've got a good start, you know, um, I did jump in short notice in my first fight, but I made some adjustments and I feel that I'm getting better and better every fight. Yeah, what did happen in the stage there between the Ultimate Fighter finale and then when you had the one fight outside the UFC then came back for UFC 239? How did that all unfold in terms of you know how it was all set up with the UFC and contracts and whatnot? Well, so I lost my final uh, fight uh, in the 145 division and it was a bummer because I was pretty stoked for that division and then when I came home... You know, I got my release letter, uh, um, and I was, I would, I would say I was pretty shocked. I was because I thought that you know I could you know, make a run for it in one thirty five instead, but that wasn't the case. Um, so I was a bit bummed, but and I had some second thoughts between that and my first fight outside of the UC after getting released. But I did end up taking a pretty pretty good fight against a belt or veteran. Um, so yeah, when that fight went pretty well, I um, I got the call like I think three weeks after. Okay, and I mean, what was the emotion like? I'm sure you were trying to go back and like show your best self, and then that fight doesn't go your way. Were you pretty freaked out again that that letter might come again, or did you feel comfortable that they'd at least give you a chance to redeem yourself and all that? No, uh, I wasn't. I wasn't that worried because uh, I was like, they can't let me go, and and like between twice and like a year, and it would be weird. <laughs> uh, no, but I really, I really try my best in that fight, and I try to do everything I could with the circumstances we were in. Um, but I did show up. I made weight, and I did fight, and um, and that was that was a tough first fight, but. I knew that coming in and I knew that I could prepare myself myself better for next time. Definitely. And obviously since then it's been all positive results. I mean, Jessica Rose Clark, Betch Cahea, Sajara Eubanks, all well established, you know, veterans who have been around the top of the UFC and stuff like that and top fighting leagues for a while. So mm -hmm. was there something that clicked for you over these past three fights, or was it just the ability to have a full training camp and be able to really just present your best self in the octagon? Well, for the first time ever, I actually got to train full time since I signed with the UFC the second time, like for the official uh, contract. So I think that made a huge difference. I mean, I I always been working a lot. Like I always been working uh, almost full time since I was 18 and training full time because uh, the chance never really been there to be, you know, training uh, full time, and I never really had like um, sponsors that could help me out that much because I do travel a lot to train as well. And uh, so before the Jessica Rose Clark fight, I really got, you know, the chance to train full time and uh, really focus on myself and getting myself the best um, treatments and training and the nutritionist and everything. So. I could prepare myself much better and I felt much more confident going in there. Yeah, when you just have that full dedication to the fight game, I mean, can you notice even in the gym, like yourself training, competing at a higher level, and then obviously it seemed to translate well into the fights too. Yeah, exactly. So I felt that was a huge difference. Um, that was like the biggest difference I felt from uh, being outside of UC and being inside was that like I got much more opportunities and um, I can sell myself much better with that. And, and with the experience I have from the ultimate fighter as well. Uh, but 
that makes like a huge difference. I didn't even think a nutritionist would make that big of a difference, but it did. That's great to hear. So in your mind, how do you keep the ball rolling here? What's the ideal next step for you? Well, 2021, I really want to keep this ball rolling and uh, keep winning and keep improving. And I, I, I either want to fight um, Pena or uh, Pennington. And May. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. Either, either of those two. And I'm going to keep training involving like for May. And I'm going to be ready for that. Yeah, so you want one of those top five, top six names. You feel this winning streak. I mean, we know in this division, like it takes three, four, five wins in a row, and maybe you're getting a title shot and you're approaching that yeah. territory. So it seems one or two good ones. To really put you but, over the hump. but if you look at the ranking, the UC ranking, uh, the people above me are either uh, like scheduled to fight or pregnant or injured. Right. So if you look at the whole whole Russo, like uh, and and Sarah McMahon just fought, and I don't want to fight anybody coming off a loss. So if you look at it, it does make sense to either fight Pena or Pennington. Yeah, do you think uh, Pena would take that fight? She seems like I'm sure you saw her post fight call out. She's saying Amanda Nunes has been ducking her and all that stuff. Do you do you yeah. buy into that? I mean, I mean that was a smart move. Everybody's talking about it. And it doesn't matter if it's not, you know, if it doesn't make sense or not. I mean, we're talking about it. So I'm guessing it made some kind of statement. Even the champ, like, uh, wrote about it. So that's the reaction you want if you go out with something like that. So that's what I'm hoping for either Pena or Raquel just to see this and just like, hey, yeah, I want to fight that penny. So hopefully. Um, yeah, but 2021, that's a towel run year, of course. I mean, I've uh, I've been fighting for 16 years now, and uh, 11 of them have been MMA. So um, it's time. I mean, I'm 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 heading into my prime. Uh, I just turned 29 in December, so this is the year. Absolutely, and I do have to ask about Raquel. I'm sure you saw the issue she had with yeah. USADA and stuff. It seems like her suspension will be cleared by the time you'd like to fight. Is there any reservations about maybe fighting someone that is dealing with that situation, or what do you kind of make of what happened there? Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like it, it's um, whatever when whatever it was, if it was like um, if it was a medication or or what it was. It, really doesn't matter i uh i tend to get through that and i tend to be better than that no yeah, that's a great way to put it very humble and everything so you said may right that's the ideal timeline yeah, for you that would be nice that would be nice to fight in may and i really like the off season time as well because i mean that's the time where fighters get better it's like in camp you really don't get any better at what you do you just get a better shape but, uh, I mean, off-season time is when we learn the most and, you know, and you get to try new stuff and go around and try different training partners and stuff. So uh, I'm, I've, been, uh, I've been enjoying it this time. These months I'm going to go around and um, I'm in Stockholm a lot training as well. So um, I'm going through, like, Stockholm, Copenhagen and here at home. Uh, just going around training and uh, learning new stuff and getting ready for me. So either of those two. Yeah, and do you have a preference? I mean, you've done the Fight Island thing, you've done the Las Vegas thing at the Apex. Which one did you enjoy more? Oh, definitely Fight Island. I love Fight Island. <laughs> it's a nice place. I mean, I've been fighting in Vegas uh, many times now, and even for Invicta and the Ultimate Fighter and, and UFC, but... Uh, I like Fight Island, and it's a shorter trip as well. Definitely, and I will say though, you got the first Fight Island trip, which seems to be the prime one because everything was yeah. open. I was just there for the one a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. it was basically with two hotels. There was not much to do, and it was my first time going, so everyone was like, "You're good. You don't know what you're missing, at least in terms of like everything." Yeah. Else. yeah. <laughs> no, it was an incredible trip, and uh, I think that when we heard about Fight Island, nobody believed it. Everybody's right. like, nah, it's not going to happen. I'm like, it's coming. Why would it make so much commercial for it if it's not going to happen? You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so 2021 has been like, and now I'm just catching up 
all the years I thought I would be in the UFC, I'm just catching up now. So now I'm just taking all the names that I always wanted to fight. And hopefully that will lead me to a tile shot. And I want to make the best of it. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm in my prime and I don't want to... I don't want to, you know, lose those years because in a few years, you know, another chapter starts. Another chapter of, you know, maybe raising a family and stuff because and I don't want to do this when I'm too old. I just yeah. I just want to go for it now. Yeah, and you said you've been doing it for a very long time in the fight game and everything. Um is it almost kind of perfect timing though? Like I'm sure you wish you could have competed in the UFC earlier on, but maybe you wouldn't have been ready. Do you feel like this is kind of the perfect time for everything to come together? I think after 27, I started to feel find myself like because I I went I did my my first pro fight at 21 I think and you know back then when you was like when you were like seven and oh eight and oh you thought oh shit I'm I can do anything I can't even get better than this I'm so good that's what you know what I thought but I didn't think that you know my prime would be like now that's when girls get really good. Um, so, you know, my experience in Invicta and Cage Warriors and on the Ultimate Fighter really led me to this. I, I'm a much smarter fighter and I can come back even after losing a round, I can come back and reset. And do you think, I mean, obviously we, we don't know the fights that are gonna be made for Amanda Nunes maybe over this coming year, but is there any doubt when you do get to that title shot, is she gonna be the one there? Or do you think there's anyone out there that maybe posed for a threat besides yourself? I don't know if she's gonna be there. I mean, if I were her, I mean, I will be done for a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, she's done so much already. I think she's gonna fight Megan and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if she retires. I wouldn't be surprised, but maybe she has something else in mind. Um, yeah, I mean, this division is, is pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty good right now. I mean, I do see myself, uh, there are a couple of fighters in the top three that will be, that I feel like those are the girls you need to beat to come to a title shot. Not only just like ranking wise, I just feel like those girls like Holly, like Jermaine, like Vera, uh, Aspen Ladd and all those girls, those girl needs to be beaten firsthand because i mean the title is going to be you know way worse so no i think that's uh, the right mindset to have and everything so that's great i mean i think you kind of laid out very well what you want in this coming year and hopefully we can put this out there and you know get some traction yeah. if you want because i think uh you're obviously on a great roll right now and the people are very excited to see if you can continue this yeah, it's super important to get Scandin Scandinavian fighting, you know, MMA out there. We've been growing so much, and um, um, I'm happy to be, you know, representing a top 15 at least. But I'm hoping next five would take me to top 10, and then, you know, we're just going to keep on going. Absolutely. The right goals to have. Well, really appreciate the time, Panny, and you laying it all out. And uh, best of luck getting the fights you want, and hopefully we get to see you in there in May when you want to. Thank you so much.